The genesis of Gatira. Um, let me backtrack and give some context about Gatira itself. Uh, essentially, uh, I pronounce it Gatira. You can actually also pronounce it Gatira. It's just an acronym. It stands for Get IDA, uh, which stands for Get Intelligent Data Analytics. So essentially, we're a technology company. We're a data company, a bunch of solutions. But our claim to fame is our ability to really maximize on what's available for Amazon sellers in terms of FBA reimbursements. So that's kind of our, uh, we have a very high uh, impact and ability to get you the maximum. And the birth of Gatito was uh, actually born from our experience as Amazon sellers. When I say ours, I mean myself and uh, our CEO, Max Boren. So I'm the COO, I'm Yoni Mazor, and uh, Max, is, uh, Max Boren is the CEO. So we're both uh, the co-founders. And uh, we started selling online about a decade ago. And of course we started on eBay, you know, eBay back in the day was the, the place to go. And um, Amazon was kind of up and coming. So around 2013, we started selling on Amazon, but we initially sold FBM, Fulfilled by Merchant. And then we kind of discovered the FBA program, the Fulfilled by Amazon program. And uh, so we said, okay, let's say it looks interesting. You can utilize Amazon's infrastructure for logistics. That's pretty interesting. Uh, Cause 2013, you know, we were not so confident about it. Because today everybody is 2020. Everybody takes for granted. Of course, of course, if you sell on Amazon, you have to go with the FBA model, uh, and you know they're a giant, and uh, you know uh, everybody really takes it for granted. But you know, uh, push back to 2013, it wasn't really the case. So we said, you know what? You know, we have $10,000 worth of units. For us, it was a lot of uh, money back then, and um, we wanted to know what's going to happen if we're going to ship our products into your warehouses. What's your policy? What happens, uh, what happens if something gets lost, damaged, destroyed, disappears, right? So uh, we called it in, right? Before we even shipped it out. So we should call it in. You know, somebody answered on the other side on uh, seller support. They said, oh yeah, we have a reimbursement policy. You can find it in this page. So we went to the page, we read all about it. Uh, so we're very granular from the set, from the get-go about what, what the policy is. And um, so, uh, so we said, okay, at least I have a policy in place. Let's ship the units in. We did. Lo and behold, a few units were lost you know, uh, when they actually uh, had the initial receiving. So we opened a case to, to notify to them, you know, to reconcile the shipment and say, oh, we lost it. Here's your money. Here's your reimbursement. So we realized, okay, these guys are serious. You know, this is something we can work with. And then we blew up, you know, we start from zero uh, in Amazon to up to 20 million very, very quickly in revenue. And then we were part of a larger group that all together as a group, we did about a hundred million. So obviously we started auditing and, and checking everything out from the first shipment. But when you uh, ship your products in and they receive it, that's kind of the beginning of your problems. Most sellers are aware of this types of issue, the inbound receiving. But uh, once the units are already inside Amazon's warehouse, you got to keep auditing. You got to see if anything got lost, damaged, destroyed, disappeared, or overcharged inside the warehouse, right? But also between warehouses, sometimes Amazon will shift your products, your goods from Kentucky to California to Nevada, whatever it is. You got to keep track of that as well. Uh, when Amazon ships your products to the consumers, to the customers, customers back to Amazon, AKA refunds, right? Uh, when Amazon ships it back to you, if you do removal orders, all these logistical friction points, we always used to track and monitor and we always found discrepancies. Things are really going wrong, going sideways. And every time we found it, we opened the case, raised it to their attention, and they used to uh, provide a resolution, usually in the form of reimbursements. Um, so on the high level, what I mentioned are logistical uh, uh, discrepancies for the most part, but there are also financial discrepancies that we discovered along the way. One uh, uh, <clears throat> fundamental example is pick and pack overcharge fees. What does that mean? Every time you sell a product on Amazon, they pick the unit from the bin, they package it in a box and they ship it out and they charge a fee for that. Uh, they call it the pick and pack fee. And the amount of the fee charge is determined by the weight and dimension of your product. So the larger and heavier your product is, the larger the fee will be. So if Amazon has incorrect data on your ASIN, on your product, where they think it's larger and, or heavier than it actually is, they're going to financially overcharge you every time they pick and pack a unit from the bin. So for example, if they're supposed to charge you two and a half dollars to pick and pack an item, uh, but instead, the information that they have is incorrect of the weight and dimension. It's inflated, and they're charging you $10. They're financially overcharging you $7.5 every time they ship a, uh, an item out to the consumer. So let's say you, you sold 1,000 units. So instead of charging you $2,500, they charge you $10,000. So the financial discrepancy here is $7,500. So that's an example of financial discrepancy that we also are, are on the lookout for. And once found, you got to kind of do two things. The first thing you got to do is update the information. So going forward, you stop the bleeding, the overcharges. And the second thing is you get Amazon to reimburse you for the over overcharges 
Um, but this uh, event is actually limited to 90 days. You're only going to be able to get the last 90 days, how much you overcharge. Anything of the overcharge beyond the 90 days is lost. You're not going to get that back. Most sellers are not aware of the, of the rules of the games for this type of issue. So we do recommend anybody listening out there, now you know, you know you're at the stage of awareness. Make sure to audit your account every month, but at the very least every 90 days for pick and pack fees. Because if being overcharged uh, and uh, it's been more than 90 days, the money is gone. I'll give you an example. If you do this once a year, you check, you check on your uh, winning dimensions and Amazon throughout the year charge you $100,000 in pick and pack overcharges. Uh, but in the last 90 days, they only charge you $30,000 that's what you're gonna get back. All the other 70,000 that's remaining is lost forever. So you have to be prudent now more than ever uh, on you know auditing uh, your account on timely matter and get that reimbursement. And this is just a sample of the myriad of types of issues that can go sideways and uh, you can, uh, you know, you're, there's eligibility to get reimbursements. So we do encourage the sellers to do as much as they can on their own, you know, to get the maximum reimbursements they're eligible to get. And then we can come in and actually get you more. Anything that's being left behind will get you more. And we work, you know, in sync with the seller. So because we, we're very customizable. In any case, um, that was kind of the gen uh, the genesis of uh, Getita, the creation.